Hey guys, welcome to another video here at Cloud Colubrids. I'm still waking up. I just got out of bed, made a fresh pot of coffee. I want to start this video early. I got a lot of things to do today, but before we get into the video, I just want to make a quick to toast to all of you guys watching the videos. You guys been great. I know this coffee is going to taste amazing. Perk me up and we're going to get into this video. Cheers. Now I'm so glad you guys are here with me today. This is a nice long video. We're gonna be building a rack from scratch out of PVC for the Freedom Breeder bins. Everybody looking to save a little bit of money. This is definitely the route to go. Now I have a lot of snakes that need to be upgraded. So this came at the perfect time. This is so easy to do. Don't be scared, hang out, grab a coffee and enjoy. All right guys, so this rack is perfect for sub-adult to small adult colubrids like corn snakes and king snakes. If you have a snake that's exceeding three and a half feet to four feet, you're gonna need a bigger bin, probably a FB70, which is a real nice size tub. But let me show you the tubs that we're gonna be using today. So these are the Freedom Breeder FB28s. You have your cup holder, that will go right here so the snake can't spill over the water. It's a nice size bin, and this is perfect for sub-adults to small adult colubrids. So let me show you exactly what you're gonna need, and we're gonna knock this out in about 30 minutes. Guys, I forgot to mention, this rack will also be perfect for baby and young ball pythons. As they grow, you'll need something bigger, but with the, when they're real small, this will be just perfect. Now this rack is so simple. I don't have a lot of ingredients, just a couple. This is the first thing you'll need is screws. Screws that will be good for PVC. So I'm using Spax, multi-purpose construction screws, one and a quarter inch. You can get this exact one. I got it at Home Depot. I believe it was around $6.99. This will last you a long time, and these are the perfect screws to go right through the PVC. And a beautiful Black and Decker drill. This is all you need to push the screw through the PVC. Now this is a corded one for about $29.99 at Home Depot. If you want to get something fancy, you can get a nice cordless one. It'll be more expensive, but I only use this a couple times a year, so it's just perfect. So last but not least, you're gonna need PVC. I get mine from Piedmont Plastics. I just email them exactly how many pieces I need, the measurements, and they put it into their computers, and they cut it with a machine precisely every time they call you or email you when it's ready, you just go pick it up. I believe they also ship, but it's a little bit more costly. Now, if you wanna build the rack that I'm doing today exact, I'll leave in the description below, the exact measurements, how many pieces you'll need, that'll be all in the description below. Or you could just get imaginative and build your own to your exact needs. So we're gonna get into this rack now, 30 minutes tops, and it'll be built. All right, so I'm gonna start it off. I don't have a cameraman, so work with me. I'm doing this all by myself. So we got our PVC, we got our 12 pieces, that'll be for each level, and we got our two beautiful side panels. So what we wanna do first, take one of the side panels, lay it down, and we're just building the base. Once we get the base built, the rest is gonna go super quick. All right guys, so to start the base, we just lay one of the side panels on the floor, we take one of the shelves, we put it just like that, now I don't have no fancy clamps or anything, so it's just gonna go just like that. Just make sure it's even, and we're gonna start screwing. All right guys, I'm giving you a closer view. This is the side panel. This is one of the shelves. So we're just gonna connect the dots. Boom, just like that. Make sure it's nice and flush, and then we're gonna screw it in. All right, so we got our first screw in. That's gonna hold it in place. 
Now we're gonna screw the bottom and then we're gonna do the middle. All right, so we got our first side panel screwed onto the base. Now we're gonna take the next piece. This is the second side panel. We're gonna just line that up and do the same thing. Screw this in and then we could turn it right side up and start building. Alright guys, so here's the side panel laying on its side. I just want to give you a close-up view of what I'm doing here. So you can see we have three screws, one on top, one in the middle, one on the bottom. So for every level I'm doing three screws on both sides, make sure it's nice and secure. Alright, so we got the side panels of both sides screwed into the first level. Now we're just gonna turn this right side up, start building it all the way up, and you could already see this is gonna be the formation of the rack. We're building it upside down. Then when we're done, we flip it upside down and it's perfect. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about when we get to the end, but it's coming out just perfect so far. down first and bam we just throw the bin right on top of it so now you got your spacer gap you got your bin now we put our second level of PVC right on top just make sure everything lines up perfectly and we screw in each side and go up go up go up all right so it would help you a lot you had someone here to help you hold these side panels. I'm doing it alone. You can do it by yourself, but if you have someone to help you, it would definitely make things a little easier. So now we got our spacer gap, our bin. We put our PVC level on top. Just make sure everything is nice and flush and we start screwing the second level in. All right, so now's the test. We pull the bin out take the spacer gap out we just throw it right on top for the next level because we're going to reuse it for there and now we're going to slide this bin in and see how nice and smooth it is and see how much gap we have on top so now i'm going to show you exactly why we use the spacer gap you can see that gap right there it gives it enough room so that the bin could slide in and out nice and smooth and it allows the snake to breathe, but you don't want that gap to be too big, otherwise the snake could escape. Again, for an adult or sub-adult colubra, this is perfect. If this was a baby hatchling, they'll be able to get right out of there, so you would need something real thin. So it's almost like that, but that works perfectly. That's the thickness of this. Now, we're just gonna start building all the way up. All right, so we got our first level done. That's the hardest part, getting these two side panels screwed onto the base. Now we got our first level. This is gonna go up super quick. Put the spacer gap, put the bin, take your next level, just place it on top, make sure it's nice and even, and we're gonna screw that in all four sides. Now I remember the first time I actually built my rack and finished it. It was the most rewarding feeling and it just gave me ideas of what I can do for future builds. If you guys actually go ahead and make a rack, you're going to totally understand exactly how to build them 
and your imagination is just going to run wild. You can build any kind of rack you want. So I highly recommend you do. Now, PVC has gone up a lot in price. It's pretty much doubled in the past two years. So it is still a little pricey, but definitely worth it. Lightweight, easy to clean, and it is just beautiful. So that's perfect. That's just what you're looking for. Look how nice and easy it slides in and out. If it was a little too tight, you would have to fight with it sometimes. You buy those racks and they're a little too tight and you're struggling with them. You don't wanna have to do all that hassle. You want it nice and smooth and you wanna make sure your snake is safe. He can't escape. He has the proper airflow. So this is just what you're looking for. Now I like to set up everything with each level. I got my screws right there. I'll put one right there, one right there. Kind of like you're making a pizza, just put some pepperoni everywhere. I got a screw, a screw. I got another screw, another, another screw right there. Make it nice and simple. Boom. Then we go to the other side. So you can see how simple this is to build. You know, I'm doing this on camera. I'm taking my time. I'm showing you. If I was doing this by myself, about 20 minutes, I'll have this whole thing up. Just put the next spacer gap on top. You just put the next bin. Take another piece of PVC. Boom. Just like that. This is so much fun. You could do it one, two, three. Then you just sprinkle the screws on each corner. You don't have to do this but this just makes it a lot easier for me. And then we start screwing them in. Make sure everything's level. Now I go to the back. I got my screw ready. You know, this is not a contest, but I'm just showing you how quick I could do this. Now, come right here. So we got the last level in. Now let's see how perfect it came out. So we don't need that anymore. Slide this in. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Slides in really, really nice and smooth. That gap is just perfect. Everything looks good. So now we're gonna test out the whole rack flip it upside down because this is gonna be, this right here is going to be the base. If you look closely, it's, it's slightly in balance. I didn't get it to the exact T measurement, but that's okay. It's a little bit gap right there. So when I flip it over, that'll be on the floor. So it won't even make a difference. So let's do that. And we're gonna taste test each level one by one. But if you have a bad back, 
it's quintessential that you get somebody to help you. You don't want to get hurt. But these are pretty light. Now, if this was melamine or a wood rack, this would probably be twice or three times the weight of, as this one. All right, so now I'm gonna go level by level, make sure this fits perfect. I already know it does, because we went in and out of each level as we built it, but let's just double check. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Double checking the space in between each one. It's just right. Everything is picture perfect. All the screws are in perfectly. There's none coming out the sides. It almost looks like a professional carpenter built this. All right, guys, so I have a lot of excess PVC. When you make your cuts, you go to Piedmont Plastics. They give you all the cuts you wanted and they always have excess. So I have a lot of excess PVC. I have enough to cover the backing. It won't be exact, but it'll be in strips. I'm gonna put the heat tape on the back. You'll see that. Now, if you live up north and you wanted belly heat, you'll have to put belly heat as it's colder up north and you'll wanna totally close this off to conceal the heat. You would need another panel, 70 and a quarter inches tall by 24 and a half inches long and it'll be flawless. So now the last thing we need to do is to apply the heat tape to the back. I'm not doing belly heat. I'm applying it along the back. Now I got my heat tape from Reptile Basics and they put on the plug for me. For about a dollar more, they'll do it for you. You can get a long, long roll of this stuff and cut it yourself or they could pre-cut it. That's the way I got it. And now this is the excess PVC I had. It fits perfectly along the back. Now I'll be able to push the bins in the rack and they won't come out through the other side. It'll hold everything in place, hold the heat tape. Now I'm just gonna screw it in and we'll be done. Alright guys, the rack came out beautifully. I just want to show you real quick why I make the depth of the rack deeper than the bins. I give it about two inches extra than the actual length of the bin. If I made it exact, it would sit right there like that, which would be fine. But for extra security, I like to be able to push it all the way back so you can see you have a nice space right here. Right here, you have a two inch clearance. So if the snake is really strong and wants to start pushing the bin forward, it's gonna take him a long time until he, until he actually can push it where he could escape. I've never had a snake ever escape from one of these. Some people will put stoppers, but I don't think it's necessary. With these, I've never had an escapee. I've never even had one try to escape. I've heard stories. I think ball pythons, it might be good to put a stopper because they're a little bit more muscular, but that's why I like the bins to be able to be pushed all the way back in so there's no chance of escape. Man, this rack came out beautifully. Now I got the struggle to pick up this rack and bring it into the snake room. Luckily, it's PVC, so it's lightweight. It wouldn't be too hard. Now, if this was wood, that'll be another story. I'm hungry. This has been a long video. I'm gonna go grab a dinner. I'm gonna do a separate video showing you all the snakes that I'm gonna be upgrading into this rack. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one. All right, so this is the side panel laying on its side. Give you guys a close view of the exact blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna start this video early. I got a lot of things to do today. <laughs> Tongue twisted.